Okay, let's continue in Chapter 7, Trigonometry of Right Triangles. Um, this lesson is going to teach you how to use the three primary trig ratios, sine, cos, and tan. Sine, cos, tan. Um, how to use those, how to find angle measurements. Okay? So up till now, we've known how to use them to find missing side lengths. But what if I give you two of the sides of a right triangle, and I ask you for an angle measure? I'm going to show you how to do that, how to find this, the value of theta. Quick review of um, the trig ratios. Each angle has its own unique sine, cos, and tan ratio. Here's our sine ratio, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine ratio, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan ratio, opposite over adjacent. How you remember that is by the acronym so ka -tilla. Okay. So sine of an angle, opposite over hypotenuse. Cos of an angle, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan of an angle, opposite over adjacent. That takes care of the three possible combinations of the three sides of a triangle. Puts them in the three possible pairs. Okay? So we also need to remember if this is our reference angle, we need to know how to label opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Okay? So remember hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. And then if this is our reference angle, opposite, the opposite side is all the way across the triangle over there. And the adjacent side is right beside the angle, right there. So the adjacent side is the side right beside the reference angle that's not the hypotenuse. Okay, so hopefully we can label this triangle. Then how are we going to use trig to find angles? Well, if I tell you that the tan of an angle um, equals 2, so I'm telling you, um, I remember tan is opposite over adjacent, so I'm telling you the ratio of the opposite over adjacent side is 2. How do I find that angle? Well, I calculate the inverse tangent of 2 to find the measure of, of angle theta. Okay, so all I do on my calculator after I make sure it's in degree mode, yep, it's in degree mode, I just do inverse tangent, okay, so that tells my calculator that I'm putting in a side ratio and not an angle, okay, so inverse tangent of 2, the side ratio, uh, the ratio of opposite or adjacent is 2, so if I put that in my calculator, inverse tan of 2, press equals, that'll tell me the angle measure, okay, so I get 63.43 degrees. So you can use um, the inverse trig functions, inverse sine, inver inverse cos, and inverse tan. Um, you can use those to find the measure of an angle in a right triangle. Make sure you can know you can only use these for right triangles. Okay? All that you need to know are any two sides of a right triangle, and you can find the angles. Okay? And you also need to know how to use SOCATOA, how to use those trig ratios. Another important thing to note here is that these exponents, or sorry, um, the negative ones here, negative ones here are not exponents. They're not exponents, okay? What they are, so not exponents, they are a notation. It's just a notation telling us that this is an inverse function. Regular trig functions um, take angles as inputs. So if I do the sine of 0 0.75, okay, that 0 0.75 I put in there, my calculator knows that that is an angle and it will then spit out, it will then tell me what the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse should be. Okay? But if I, if I use the inverse trig function, so if I do inverse sine, okay, it takes side ratios as inputs and gives us angle, so it does the opposite. So if I press inverse sine, the input I put in there um, will be a side ratio. So let's say the side ratio was 0.85. Okay, so my calculator knows what I put in here is, no, is not an angle. Because I pressed inverse sine, my calculator knows that this is now a side ratio, and it'll tell me what the angle should be. The angle should be 58.2. Okay, so read that over. Make sure that makes sense to you. Um, so then when we go through the examples, you're not just mindlessly putting stuff in on your calculator. You know what you're telling your calculator, and you know why you're doing it. Okay, I think we are almost ready to do a couple examples. Let's just make sure we know how to put this in our calculator properly. So if sine theta equals 10 over 26, I know that theta, ah, no highlighter, get rid of the highlighter. There we go. So I know that theta equals the inverse sine of 10 over 26. Okay, by pressing inverse sine on my calculator, so second sine brings up inverse sine, by pressing the inverse of sine, 
Uh, I know I'm telling my calculator that what I'm about to input is a side ratio, not an angle. Okay, so I'm in inputting a side ratio, and it will give me the angle once I press equals. The angle is 22.62. Because I have awesome rounding skills, I was able to, you know, to round that one up to a two because the number after it was uh, greater than or equal to five. Okay, cos of theta equals 0 0.25. So the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse is 0 0.25. To figure out theta, just do the inverse cos of 0 0.25. Input that on your calculator. Inverse cos, press inverse cos, so my calculator knows what I'm about to input is a side ratio. So I input a side ratio. Um, press equals, boom, done. My angle is 75. Five. Okay, we are ready to do a question. So, number one, find the measure of the indicated angle. So I need to find theta. Before I do that, I just want to label my triangle with opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Um, hypotenuse across from the right angle. Opposite from theta, go across the triangle. Here it is. Adjacent right beside it. There we go. I've got it labeled. Now I can figure out what trig ratio to use. I, if I remember correctly, so I have the opposite, I have the adjacent hypotenuse, but I don't know what that is. I could figure out using Pythagorean's theorem, but that's too much work. Um, so I'm just going to use what I have. I know opposite, I know adjacent. What ratio has opposite and adjacent? Tan, okay? The tan ratio, TOA, tan, equal, tan of an angle equals opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to use tan. I know the tan of an angle equals opposite. 1 over adjacent, 2. Okay, So if I know the tan of an angle equals 1 over 2, I know I can figure out the angle by just doing the inverse tan of the side ratio, 1 over 2. Put that into my calculator. Theta equals, let's do inverse tan. And my side ratio is 1 over 2, 1 divided by 2. Close my bracket. The angle should be 26.57. Once again, I have used my rounding skills. Okay, I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth. Okay, 26.57. So, I know angle theta. It is 26.57. Awesome. One example done. Example 2. Solve for angle G. So, I want to solve... Oh, hold on one sec. I'm about to sneeze, I think. No, okay, it went away. Okay, we'll continue. Okay, so I want to find angle G. Um, first off, again, I'm going to label my triangle. If this is my reference angle, I know my hypotenuse is across from the right angle. There's my hypotenuse. My opposite side, go all the way across the triangle. Here's opposite. Adjacent, right beside the angle. Here's my adjacent. So I know adjacent and hypotenuse. So what ratio has adjacent and hypotenuse? That's the ka of Sokotoa. So I'm going to use the cosine ratio. So I know the cos of G, of angle G, equals adjacent over hypotenuse, 3.6 over 7.3. Okay. So I know the cos of an angle equals 3.6 over 7.3. I know the side ratio. So to find the angle, I do the inverse cos of that side ratio. 3.6 over 7.3. On my calculator, press inverse cos, so second cos. My calculator knows what I'm putting in as a side ratio. 3.6 divided by 7. Point, oh, no, not 7.03. Delete, delete. 7.3. 3.65 by 7.3. Boom, there's my answer. So angle G, angle G equals 60.45 degrees. 60.45 degrees. And I'm so excited I found that. I'm just going to write it in here. 60.45 degrees. There it is. I know that. If I wanted to, I could figure out angle E just by subtracting um, 90 and 60.45 from 180, because I know the sum of all these angles has to be 180. Okay? Let's do another example. Solve for angle Q. So I want to solve for Q. 
Well, let me label my triangle again. Um, hypotenuse across from the right angle. Opposite, go all the way across the triangle. There we go. Opposite. Adjacent, right beside the angle. Awesome. Okay. So I know hypotenuse. I know opposite. What ratio is opposite and hypotenuse? That's the so ratio. So I'm going to use sine. I'm going to use the sine of angle Q equals opposite over hypotenuse, 5 over 11. So I now know if I want to find um, angle Q, I have to use the inverse of sine. Okay? Inverse sine, um, inverse sine of 5 over 11 of the side ratio. Put that on my calculator. Use inverse sine so my calculator knows I'm putting in a side ratio. 5 divided by 11. So that's the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse. Um, my calculator, because I pressed inverse sine, will then spit out the angle measure that should have, that there should be. And there it is, 27.04. 27.04. There we go. Angle Q is 27.04. I could calculate angle S. I know the angle is in a triangle. Add to 180. I know this one is 90, so 180 minus 90 minus 27.04, uh, not 14, 27.04, they'll tell me that this one should be 62.96. There we go. I've got both angles in that triangle. I didn't even ask for angle S, but I was just on such a good roll that I decided I'd figure it out anyway. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Any questions, let me know. Make sure you do the work that's associated with this, um, this section. Okay, uh, have a good day.